A reading from the beginning of the book of Ruth. Once in the time of the judges, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem of Judah departed with his wife and two sons to reside on the plateau of Moab. Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons, who married Moabite women, one named Orpha and the other Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Chilion died also, and the woman was left with neither her two sons nor her husband. She then made ready to go back from the plateau of Moab, because word reached her there that the Lord had visited his people and granted them food. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth stayed with her. Naomi said, See now, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her God. Go back after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not ask me to abandon or forsake you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Thus it was that Naomi returned with the Moabite daughter-in-law Ruth, who accompanied her back from the plateau of Moab. They arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, my soul. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate the 12th century Saint Bernard of Clairvaux. He's regarded as the second founder of the Cistercians, and we wish the Cistercians well on this particular feast day of a man who is not only an abbot and founded some 86 monasteries himself, but a great doctor of the church. That means his teachings, his writings, his preaching have provided a particular source of wealth for the church, intellectually, theologically, spiritually. This is what a doctor of the church designates. And he's known for the writing the prayer, the memorare, which I'm sure many of you say each day. Of the many things he said and did and left to us in his wisdom, he preached against a heresy that still has its impact today. It comes in many different forms down through the centuries, but it's at the root of many of the moral evils that we fight against, including the fundamental evil of abortion. 
And it's the Albigensian heresy. And, and, and uh, to, to, to oversimplify things, basically what it says is, look, you know, there were things in the universe that were created by God and other things that were created by an evil spirit call him the devil or of some force of evil. And the spiritual things are good. God created the spiritual things. But the material things, including the human body, well, they were not created by God and they're not good. So you have this dualism. The spiritual things are good. The physical things are not good. And friends, that is not Christian teaching. And St. Bernard made it clear that is not Christian teaching. Yes, there are spiritual realities. Yes, for example, our soul is spiritual. It survives the body. When the body dies and decays, the soul still lives immortal. We still think. We still choose. We still know. We know God. We know ourselves. We know each other. We have a spiritual immortal soul. We have a mortal body that decays without the soul. But God created both. God created everything. And everything that God created is good. This is the fundamental biblical Christian teaching, the Catholic teaching. We are to love the Lord our God with our whole soul and mind and heart and strength and our neighbor as ourselves, recognizing the goodness that God has created in ourselves and in our neighbor and recognizing God as God. No other spirit created anything. Only God is capable of creating. Now, if the body was created by God and therefore is good, then brothers and sisters, taking care of the body is also good. The body's role in its beauty the body's role in relationships like the intimate relationship of marriage, human sexuality leading to new life is all good. Now, it has to be lived out in accordance with our vocation, of course. But it is good and holy. And this is something that we still have the heresy today of dualism. In our role of proclaiming the sanctity of life here at Priests for Life and in the pro-life movement, we make it clear to people that no matter what the inconveniences might be of a pregnancy, especially if it's unexpected, that hand of God is there in the conception of that child. That child, that child's body is good. And it is the body and soul that constitute the person of that child. Now, why do I say that? Because some think it's only the soul. And you see, the problem here is that that can provide them an excuse to kill the body. I've heard it in counseling. Some of you who counsel people who are tempted to have abortions may have heard the same thing, where the mother says, well, you know, I believe that this is a child and God gave me the child, but I'm not ready for the child, so I'm going to give the child back to God. In other words, kill the child by abortion. You're not giving the child back to God. You're killing the child. But some might be tempted to think, well, you know, it's just it's the spirit, you know, that really matters. I could, you know, dismember the body, crush the skull, but it's the spirit that really matters. So eh, it's all good, you know, I'm giving the spirit back to God. No, it's not good. The body is good. And if you crush and destroy, dismember, decapitate the body and pull the skull out by pieces, like abortion does, that's not good. It is an attack on the person to attack the body. doesn't matter what you think about the soul. That's why when I spoke to abortionist Martin Haskell by telephone years ago, and ask them, how is it that you, that you can do these late-term abortions? He said to me, well, I know it's a child. But my question is, does the child, when does the child get a soul? And I said to him, you know, that doesn't make any difference. We have our beliefs about when the child has a soul, but that's not 
what you need to be thinking about when it comes to abortion, when you, what you need to be thinking about is, I cannot destroy this body. That, the fact that the child has a body is all you need to know, Dr. Haskell, to realize that you shouldn't be tearing that body apart and throwing it in the medical waste because it's the body of a human person. Oh, well, what does the child receive as soul? See, I was talking to him about a scientific medical procedure. He was talking to me about souls. The doctor is talking to the priest about souls. The priest is talking to a do the doctor about medical procedures. It was the craziest conversation. But it's so important for him to realize and for us all to realize the body is just as sacred as the soul. You don't touch it. We were praying outside an abortion facility in the Midwest, as I've done at almost every abortion facility in America, and one of our prayer partners had his feet over the property line and the person in the clinic came out and said, get your feet off our property. And I paused at that moment in the prayers and I looked at them and I said, and when are you going to get your hands off God's property? They take refuge in the spiritual explanation. Oh, the soul, the soul, the soul. Never mind about the soul. Stop killing the body. Stop reaching in there to the sacred spaces of the womb and stealing God's property and treating it like garbage. You start treating the, soul, the, the bodies of the unborn as garbage and you, you're going to see that you're less capable of responding when others treat the body as garbage at other stages of life, whether child abuse or violent murders or, or anything at all. Brothers and sisters, St. Bernard made it clear. God is the creator of all things, visible and invisible bodies and souls, and it's all good, and it all must be respected. That's why, as one more example of what this dualism can cause in the moral confusion of our times. When Terry Schiavo was killed, and I was very much involved in defending her life and helping her family back in between 2000 and 2005, which is the year that she died, her alienated, estranged, murderer husband, Michael Schiavo, he put on her gravestone not two dates, as is normally the case, the date of her birth and the date of her death. He put three dates, the date of her birth, the date of her death, and then in between, the date on which she incurred her brain injury. And from that point on, he insisted that she not be given adequate care, treatment, rehabilitation, and ultimately deprived her with the court's help of food and water. And that's how she died. She wasn't dying from any disease. She died because the court ordered that we not feed or give her drink. So on the gravestone, he put the day that she died, and then the day of her brain injury, the day of her brain injury, he put the words, departed this earth. And then the day of her actual death, he put, at peace. So Michael, you need a good dose of St. Bernard of Clairvaux. You're a murderer. And you're also the victim of a sick way of thinking that denies the goodness of the body and the unity of the person, the human person, as body and soul. The idea that a person departs this life simply because they can't talk, simply because they can't function, with the same level of cognitive ability as the rest of us. The idea that that constitutes departing this earth then, of course, raises a serious question. Who's lying in that bed? Who's being fed, albeit with a feeding tube? Who is that that's being washed? Who is that that's being given medicine? Who is that? 
That's a human person. Terry was alive. I saw her. She wasn't just lying there, motionless. She was laughing. She was following me with her eyes around the room. She was closing her eyes when I gave her a blessing and opening them again when we said amen at the end of the prayer. But who was that? According to Michael, murderer that he is, she had already departed this earth. That's a fantasy. That's a fantasy, Michael, that allows you to do your murder. You, 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 you pretend she's not really there. I must not be murdering anybody because, after all, she's already departed this earth. Yeah, in your imagination, she departed this earth. Brothers and sisters, be careful of this wicked and evil philosophy. This is why St. Bernard is a doctor of the church and preached against it so vigorously, and we must preach against it vigorously. This idea that it's really just about the soul. No, it's about the body. And you care for the body, and you feed the body, and you treat the body, and you respect the body. You don't dismember it by abortion. You don't throw it away by euthanasia. You don't kill it by any other act of violence. You honor it as a temple of the Holy Spirit. No matter how damaged it might be, it is always good. No matter how low the level of functioning might become, it is always a temple of the Holy Spirit. No matter how much of an injury it might sustain, it is still you. You are your body as much as you are your soul. And so is Terry, and so is every unborn child. We don't give them back to God. They don't depart this earth when, they, when they're injured, they are with us and we must be with them. Let us defend human life, body and soul. Let us honor God, creator of both body and soul. Let us draw inspiration from the saints like Bernard of Clairvaux to stand up strong for the truth of the dignity of the human person and the call given by Christ to share his glory both in body and in soul. Jesus, bring us to the kingdom of life. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, pray for us. Amen.